Traditional Japanese longbow and arrow. Competitors draw their bows, attempting to strike a 36 centimeter wide target at a distance of 28 meters. This is the sport of Kudo. Kudo is one of Japan's most revered and widely practiced martial arts. Its distinct characteristics set it apart from other sports like judo and karate, however. Rather than facing an opponent, in kudo, archers face only a target. While the aim is to hit the target as frequently as possible, shots are simply recorded as on or off target, regardless of whether they strike the middle or the edge. The nature of the sport also means the archer's psychological state has a fundamental impact. Practitioners of Kudo believe the arrow will always find its target if the archer's body, mind, and technique all come together as one. Takeo Ishikawa, one of Japan's leading traditional archers, or Kudoka, fires his arrow into the darkness. Incredibly, he can still find the target. When you first begin, it's okay to simply enjoy seeing if you can hit the target. Many people start out like that. But as you progress, spiritual training becomes essential, so you're no longer trying to hit the target, but rather releasing an arrow that will naturally find the target. Relying only on strength won't let you progress. Behind the slow, simple-looking movements lie deep and sophisticated techniques. We take a closer look at some of Kudo's secrets. I'm here at the Shiseikam, a venue for traditional Japanese archery, or Kudo, located in the grounds of the famous Meiji Shrine in central Tokyo. Even as archers fire their arrows, the reverential atmosphere makes clear this is a sacred place. Surrounded by the stillness of the shrine grounds, Masao Ijima draws his bow. Watching Kudo up close for the first time, I was amazed by the size of the bow and speed of the arrow. A standard Japanese bow is 2 meters 21 centimeters in length. And the arrow flies at a speed of about 180 to 200 kilometers an hour. Japanese bows are the longest in the world, and as a result, you need to pull back further than with any other bow. Japanese bows are the longest in the world. Made using a combination of bamboo and Japanese wax tree, they range between 212 and 233 centimeters in length, over half a meter longer than the bows typically used in modern competitive archery. So why do kudoka use such long and unwieldy bows? If you have a short bow, but you draw it back the same distance, then the stress on each part of the bow will actually be greater the shorter it is. And this means it will break more easily. In order to prevent bows from breaking, if you keep making them longer, you can reduce the stress on each individual part when the bow is drawn. So. 
The main objective of making the bow longer is to ensure it doesn't break. In Kudal, unlike modern archery, bows are not equipped with aids such as sights or stabilizers. Instead, the kudoka is required to sight the target with their eyes only and stabilize the bow and arrow with nothing but their own technique. When a kudoka strikes the target, they never celebrate, as showing outward signs of emotion is believed to reflect poor mental control. Another unique characteristic of kudo is where the bow is held. In modern archery, and in most other forms around the world, the bow is held in the middle. In Japan, however, for over 2,000 years, bows have been held about a third of the way up from the bottom. So why are Japanese bows held closer to the bottom like this? Let's look at what happens when the bow is held in the middle. <gasps> this is much easier. This is much easier. I don't need much power. As the bow can be drawn easily, this means the bowstring will also rebound weakly giving the arrow little force. This changes greatly when the grip is moved to a third of the way up from the bottom. Pull it all the way back to behind your ears. This is my max. Drawing the bow is much harder when holding in this lower position, which in turn means more force is transferred to the arrow. Holding the bow in this position also reduces vibration through the hand. To see the difference, we compared both positions, starting with a look at what happens when the bow is held incorrectly in the middle. The vibration through your hand is exceptionally strong in this position nearly enough to make you drop the bow. We used a vibrometer to measure the vibrations. To ensure an accurate reading, we secured all equipment firmly in place and compared the force of vibration after drawing the bowstring by just 10 centimeters. First, we measured with the grip in the middle, where the vibration is greater. The waveform graph is converted into a reading of 975. We then repeated the experiment with the bow held a third of the way up from the bottom. The reading now is just 571, showing the vibration has virtually been halved. So why does holding the bow lower down produce less vibration? Drawing the bow naturally produces vibration. However, one third of the way up from the bottom, there's a sweet spot where the waves cross. And as a result, it keeps relatively still. Vibration occurs when the bowstring returns on release of the arrow. The orange line shows vibration along the bow, and you can see that a third of the way up from the bottom is a point where the vibrations are relatively still. This is known as a node, and in Kudo, it's where archers hold the bow. Holding at the node reduces vibration. So, in terms of physics, this really is an excellent way of firing a bow and arrow. In the past, bows and arrows were used in warfare. Between the 13th and 16th centuries, a period of wars and social instability, bows were developed to provide archers with more power. In 
In those days, only high-ranking officials were allowed to ride horses, so a powerful bow and arrow that could strike from a distance was the best way of achieving what was then considered the great honor of felling a high-rank opponent. Horseback archery techniques, or yabusame, are also still practiced in Japan, even to this day. Yabusame requires a rider to take both hands off the reins of a galloping horse in order to shoot their bow and arrow. The Toshia, an archery festival held every January in Kyoto, serves to keep another ancient tradition alive. The long-distance tournament uses targets 60 meters away, though in the past, the full 121-meter length of the temple veranda was used. Japan's leading archers gather for the festival, and countless arrows are fired day and night. To shoot accurately over long distances, the arrow used is also important. Kudo stores sell a wide selection of arrows with various different characteristics. Modern arrows can be made from a range of materials including bamboo, aluminum, and carbon fiber. But it is the bamboo arrows made with traditional techniques that are actually said to fly most true. People now typically use carbon fiber arrows for practice, but switch to bamboo on important occasions like examinations or tournaments. When making an arrow, it's important for the shaft to be as straight as possible. The bamboo is first softened through heating and then straightened using a special tool. A blade is used to shave the surface to ensure the entire shaft is of even thickness. It's then sprinkled with sand and polished using a grindstone. The final step is to attach the fletching. Three feathers are attached to the arrow, evenly spaced. And once the length of the fletching is adjusted, they are bound in place and the arrow is complete. An arrow's fletching has a huge impact on how straight it flies. Kudo arrows have three pieces of fletching and rotate as they fly, which increases stability and keeps them going straight. How does the flight path of an arrow differ when it's fired with or without fletching? First, let's take a look at a normal arrow with the fletching attached. Now, here's an arrow without fletching. The difference is very clear. Without fletching, the arrow can't reach its target and falls short, sticking into the ground. No matter how many times the arrow is fired, the result is always the same. When the arrow rotates, it flies true, adjusting itself as it moves towards the target. The number of rotations